You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the May 6, 2024 meeting of the Michigan City Board of Public Works and Safety. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Okay, good morning, Michigan City. Um, I'll call this uh, Board of Works meeting to a order. Uh, this is Monday, May 6, 2024. The time is 8.30. Uh, I will call the roll call. Ms. Antisdo? Present. Ms. Smith? Ms. Moore? Present. Mr. Simmons? Present. Mr. York is present. We have a quorum. Our first order of business today is to approve our regular uh, regular Zoom meeting. Approval of minutes, I'm so sorry. Approval of minutes for the regular hybrid Zoom meeting of April 15th, 2024. Do I hear motion to approve? Here's second. second. I'll call the roll. Ms. Antisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Motion passes. Um, we have approval of minutes for executive session meeting on uh, April 15th, 2024. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Support. Call the roll. Ms. Antisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Mr. Um, I'm sorry. Mr. Uh, Simmons? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Motion approved. Um, our first order of business today is a memorandum of understanding. Uh, this is an agreement between the City of Michigan City and Tim Adams, Kyle Foken, and... Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mr. Beal, I apologize. Attorney Beal, I apologize. This is the one I'm actually very excited about. Uh, <laughs> and I totally overlooked it. My, pa, my apology. Uh, opening of proposals for a request for proposals for permitting software for the planning and inspections department. I'm going to hand it over to attorney Beal for opening those. Uh, good morning. So there have been uh, four proposals submitted. Um, so I'll open these now. The uh, first proposal is from Noratech Solutions. Proposal number two is from SDL Connect. Uh, proposal number three is from it says City Inserved through Online Solutions LLC. And finally, Uh, proposal number four is from Cloud Permit. At this time, uh, just ask the board to recommend referral of these proposals to Planning, Legal, and the IT Department. Do you have a motion? Motion to refer these proposals to the Planning and IT legal and IT legal and IT department. 
support. I'll call for the vote. Ms. Antisto? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you, Mr. Attorney Bill. Okay, now to our memorandum of our, our next order of business is a memorandum of understanding. This is an agreement between the City of Michigan City, Tim Adams, Kyle Foken, and Pam Rethmeyer for Sculpt Fusion Sculptures. And this involves the moving of existing sculptures and a loan agreement. Sh Shannon, are you going to present on this, uh, Parks Director? Thank you, Shannon. I'm Shannon Eason, treasurer of the Michigan City Public Art Committee. Um, the MOUs before you today are for our program Sculpt Fusion, and that's where we rotate sculptures in and out of the Uptown Arts District to keep it fresh exhibition. Um, so there are four new pieces this year. We would like to move an existing piece to just a more visible location. And also, I'm excited that we have a five-year loan agreement at no cost to the city. So that's for a very, very large piece that's in front of the Michigan City um, Skate Park, very visible on the gateway to the city. So I would just ask that you um, approve the moves, the four new installations, and the loan agreement. And happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions of Ms. Season? Uh, hearing none, I'll, call, I'll open it up for public comment. Any public comment? Hearing none, I'll close public comment and call for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Call for the vote. Ms. Antisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good week. Our next order of business is a petition to buy city-owned property. Austin Tabor at 214 East 9th Street is petitioning to purchase a city-owned lot at 9th Street. Uh, the parcel ID is 46012943402200022022. Um, at this time, uh, I might ask that Attorney Beal give us kind of a, could you give us kind of a, a synopsis of purchase of property sure. in, in a nutshell? So uh spoke to Attorney LePage on Friday. And um, first of all, she sent out an email to all the department heads just to get their feedback. I think most of them have responded to no objection to the possible sale of this property. Um, so I think after she gets everything back, one, she requested that be tabled for a couple of weeks just to allow that to happen. And then assuming there are no objections or problems, um, move forward with the bidding process. There's got to be notice to adjacent property owners and kind of an open bidding process for the, for the property. Yep. And the, the tabling allows us to pull the deed and uh, right. do the background work on the property so that we can dispose of it appropriately. I see Mr. Tabor in the audience. So that's kind of the process that we go through. Uh, you, you're more than welcome to make any comments that you would, you would like. If not, but that's kind of the process. Give us your name and address. Uh, Austin Tabor, 214 East 9th Street, Michigan City. Um, I, I think you explained it pretty clearly, so thank you for that. Um, I don't really have any questions at this time, but I'm definitely interested in purchasing it. So if there's any updates, uh, Skylar, you have my email. Yep. Um, so just feel free to send any anything my way. Yep, you're welcome. Yep. All right, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. um, do I hear a motion uh, at this time? Motion. I guess I should open up for public comment. I'm so sorry. Is there any public comment on this uh, on this uh, agenda item? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain. I'll close the comment uh, or public comment and entertain a motion. Motion to uh, table the pending uh, investigation of background. 
second. Well, is there a time frame we should probably table this to? I, I think two weeks is fine. Two weeks? Okay. Yes. 20th? To hear a second? Second. <laughs> that was good. Uh, I'll call for the I'll call for the vote. Miss Antisdo? Aye. Miss Smith? Aye. Miss Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Um we'll table this till the 20th and, and Austin will get back with you. Um, our next order of business is a traffic control device. Uh, Councilman Don Presbolinski is requesting to install a flashing stop sign or flashing stop signs at Barker Ave and Ohio Street. Councilman, good morning. Morning, board members. Uh, Don Presbolinski, City Councilman at Large, and I live at 215 Gardena Street. And I think we're all familiar with the intersection of Barker and Ohio Street uh, up on top of the hill there. And the amount of traffic that Ohio Street carries, that's our main thoroughfare, I want to say, on the west side of Michigan City. And it carries traffic from Lighthouse Place all the way out to uh, US 20. Uh, at that particular intersection, this has always been an issue. And there was finally a stop sign put in uh, after Councilman Paul Przbolinski petitioned the Board of Works. And I wanna say that's probably been about maybe two and a half years ago, I believe that that, that happened. So there was a four-way stop put in. And then it was still getting complaints from the neighbors that cars are running through the stop signs. Okay. So then I addressed it with the uh, street superintendent, Sean Smith, and they put the whirlies up on top of the stop sign to try to catch the attention of the drivers. Well, that maybe worked a little bit. Okay. Now it can, it continued on. So then I called Shin or, uh, Sean, and I says, why don't we put the red reflective strips on the upright poles that hold the stop signs? So he did that. Cars continue to go through the stop sign. Now, because the neighbors have requested to me to come up here and petition to get the red flashing stop signs like we have up and down Washington Street and Pine Street, that that would perhaps catch the attention of the drivers even more. Uh, some folks have had near misses up there. I'm talking about the neighbors as cars pass through. Uh, neighbors will be bar backing out onto Ohio Street and cars will come right through the stop sign and just go right around them, don't even stop. <clears throat> so we're just trying to be proactive. I'm trying to be proactive uh, for, for the neighbors. And uh, take, for example, last week, Friday, I went and I did my own little traffic study there. And I sat at that intersection for approximately an hour. And this was between 4.30 and 5.30, the busy time of the day, traffic time. And I saw for three cars go right through the uh, intersection. Uh, I dearly and wholeheartedly agree that uh, these four, these uh, flashing red lights are needed there before we have a serious accident or maybe even a fatal accident happening there. Uh, oh, and the other thing I wanted to uh, share with the board because it was brought to my attention by some folks, is that coming both northbound on Ohio and going southbound on Ohio, that there is warning signs, that there's a stop sign, I don't know, within 100 feet or whatever the distance is. So there's warning signs on both sides of the 
stop sign too. So I am petitioning the board that we install these flashing red lights. Uh, I think Sean said that he had, he, he had a couple in storage right now. If the board would approve it, he could probably get them up. And uh, yeah, that's my uh, request before the board of works today. Thank you, Councilman. Um, any questions of Councilman at this time? I don't have any questions, but I just want to say I definitely agree with you. The very first time I drove through that without even realizing I'm looking across the street at the spinny thing on the stop sign on the other side and blew right through my stop sign. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even realize until after you brought it up Thursday evening that there was a warning sign because I travel Ohio most days of the week before the curve. Um, so doing something to bring extra attention to that, I think, probably is definitely needed. I'll concur, uh, being that this is a uh, very busy and one of our main quarters and mm -hmm. people travel north and south. But I would also like to say that um, perhaps the district unit uh, may pay some close attention to that area and write some citations. Any other comments from the board? I mean, my, my only thought and question would be um, if he has some in stock, how soon he could get them in. And if not, what would it what would be the cost to get some? You know, um, he's not here today, so we can't ask that. But I absolutely agree because that's my side of town as well. Um, so that would be my it, you said he has has a few in stock already. Like, what does the install and in, in going to cost or labor or whatever? But I think it's doable. Thank you very much. Um, no, other, no other questions and okay so uh are you asking for all four to be replaced that was yeah i'm asking okay. for that was my only question yeah all four on the uh okay. intersection if you're going to do two you might as well do four and be done with it and, um, and and in my opinion is we've done the most that we can do besides putting the traffic officer there in the middle of the intersection directing traffic and we know that that's not going to happen or putting in stoplights. And we know that we're not putting stoplights in on the corner of Ohio and uh, Barker Ave. That'd be probably a little yeah. tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Thank you, Councilman. Um, You're welcome. Thank you very much. Any comments from Corporate Wright or um, our, our city engineer? Good. Okay. I'll open up for public comment. Yeah, Tommy Kolovic, 1316 Ohio Street. And it was usually customary to have the police conduct a traffic study before you have this done, before you vote on it. But my suggestion would be take some off of a 9th Street. They put several of those flashing lights up there on 9th Street when they reconvert it back to two-way traffic to one-way. Because since you made 11th Street one-way going eastbound to our, take some of the traffic off going through Marquette. That'd be, you know, th those are very expensive to... To, to, to purchase and I know the, the solar panel has to stay clean and you know it takes a lot of capacity for street department to maintain those so you might want to take a couple off a of ninth the ones off a of ninth street I think they took those from pine when they converted that you know everybody's now used to you might want to put those up there so that that, that would be my suggestion thank you any other public comment do I hear um motion or would we what's the pleasure of the board would we like to find out what the cost if we only have two would we like to hear what the cost is of the other two or i wish sean was here to maybe let us know how many exactly he had in stock i, I, I would say so yeah would we uh could uh, could we make a motion uh to refer this to our city engineer to follow up with Sean and then get us a cost of if if he has four in stock I guess that's a different situation if there's only one maybe that's or is there any that we can shift over oh. do I hear a motion uh, yeah absolutely we're gonna have to if if <laughs> Then we have to order a new stop sign. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> any uh any any 
uh, do, do I hear a motion to maybe refer, can we refer this to our city engineer? Yeah, I'll make a motion to refer it to a city engineer to get with Sean and uh, have some dialogue in regards to exactly how many we have in stock and the cost of ordering more. And support. I'll call for the vote. Ms. Santisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Oh. Um, our next order of business is uh, Traffic Control, Kim Bailey at 301 East Homer Street, and David Wart at 1112 Belden Street are requesting a four-way stop at Homer Street and Lafayette. Um, are they here today? Anyone representing this here today? Okay, um, Corporal Wright, I'll hand it off to you. Do you have any analysis or comments on this one? Good morning, Board. Corporal Brian Wright, Commander, Michigan City Police Department Traffic Division. Um, looking at the stats over the last five years for this intersection, we've only had four crashes there. Um, and they were all... See a car on Homer Street pulled in front of a car on Lafayette. Vehicles ran a stop sign. Basically, it's no issue of anybody traveling on Lafayette Street. It's all Homer Street issues. Um, I spoke with Sean about this actually last week, and he recommended kind of like Ohio Street, one of the stop sign ahead signs on Homer Street for now. Um, and that seems to be the issue. It always it just seems to be the issue of people traveling east and west on Homer Street. So I would say that at this point, I wouldn't put a stop sign on Lafayette Street and try to just make the ones on Homer Street more visible to people. Okay. Any other comments from uh, City Engineering? Any, any comments? I'm going to get you up here yet. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> Tim Warner, City Engineer. I agree with Corporal Brian Wright. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll open. Uh, any other comments from the board on this? He what he was recommended is uh, he's recommending a stop ahead on the east west traveling street, which would be um, Homer and. Um, it, I think his analysis is saying that um, it's not a it's a user error uh, from going from the cars leaving and entering into Lafayette and then getting hit by not watching what they're doing rather than a issue with this with the intersection. Um, any public comment? I'll, any any comment? Any more comments from the board? I'll open it up for public comment. Any com public comment on this? Anything online? Okay, hearing none, I'll close public comment. Do I hear a motion from the board? Motion to install um, a stop ahead light on the east of Homer. Stop ahead sign? Stop ahead sign, I'm sorry. Is that flashing? Oh, oh, just a regular stop sign. Well, the 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 stop sign there is uh is static, yeah. Um, so it would just be a static sign. It wouldn't be a flashing stop sign. It would just be a stop ahead or a stop sign ahead, a warning sign. Absolutely, that's what I would explain. Yeah. Okay, motion to install a stop ahead warning sign on East Homer. Support. I'll call for the vote. Ms. Santisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you, Corporal Wright. Our next order of business is a road closure for special event. Robert Hawk at American Legion uh, JFM Post 37 is requesting to close Franklin Street and Decatur Street for the Memorial Day Parade on May 27th, 2024, 
from 9.30 to 10.30. The parade will start at Ames Field and end at Greenwood Cemetery. Um, Corporal Wright, is this a pretty calm? This I think this is the same as usual. Yes, sir, that's correct. This is the same as we've done in the past year, so there's no issues and we'll be prepared for it. Okay. Any uh, comments from the board? Hearing none, I'll open it up for public comments. Any public comments? Anything online? All right, hearing none, I'll close public comments. I'll open it up for I'll entertain a motion. Uh, before the motion, does their COI look correct, Attorney View? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. There are no issues with the Thank COI. You. Thank you. Okay. I will motion for approval then. Support. I'll call for the vote. Ms. Antisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Um, let's see. This next um, order of business is to amend a, an event, a special event request. Eric Camel, uh, Director of St. Joseph's Young Men's Society, is requesting to amend the approval of the annual summer festival application to have the festival fee waived due to St. Joseph's Young Men's Society being a not-for-profit fraternal organization. Um, I do believe we have approved this, but now they're coming back to amend this to ask that we waive the fee, which um, I do believe we can waive the fees for nonprofits if we uh, so choose to do. Um, is anyone here to represent this today? Okay, um, any board comments at this time? Okay, I'll open it up for you. Have, I'll open it up for public comment. Any public comment on this matter? Okay, hearing none, I'll close public comments. Any, uh, do I hear a motion or what's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve. Support. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Ms. Antisdell? Aye. Ms. Mo uh, Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Motion approved. Thank you. Um, our next order of business is a change order. Uh, Timothy Warner, city engineer, is requesting a change order on the 2024 Michigan City sidewalk replacement contract at the 100 and 200 blocks of Gardenia Street. Uh, the char the change order the change order is 5.67 percent increase at the amount of eight thousand. I'm sorry, five thousand eight hundred and four dollars and forty cents, bringing the total amount to one hundred eight thousand, one hundred eight thousand, one hundred eight dollars. <laughs> Can you read this morning? One hundred eight thousand. Oh my goodness gracious! One hundred eight thousand, one hundred eight dollars and twenty five cents. Sorry, I'm having issues this morning. Uh, Mr. Warner, I'll open it up if you, you can come up and. Give us a, I think there might be a couple of questions on our sidewalk stuff too. Tim Warner, city engineer. Um, we had the 2024 contract for the sidewalk uh, come through. For Gardena, for whatever reason, the 300, 400, 500, 600 blocks had sidewalk replacement in the contract, but the 100 and 200 blocks didn't coming off Franklin Street. Don Prisbalenti, councilman, brought it to my attention. We went out and looked and there were sections that were just as bad as the 200 through 600 blocks. So mm -hmm. Don asked me to take a look and kind of identify the areas that need to be replaced. And we came up with that amount of sidewalk for the 100 and 200 block to make it a complete improvement for Gardena. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good good addition to it. You you explained it to me, and it makes total sense. So, any questions, there, Mr. Warner? I know Mr. Simmons asked a few earlier. My, my only question: the list is already established. I take it 
Correct. That was in the contract for the 2024 replacement. So this would be additional work to that contract. Yeah. Do we have a list of pending? Uh, I've got a long list of additional work for the next contract. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So people can call in. Call the call the city and engineer and I'll add it to the list for our next contract. I'll okay. come up with the cost estimate. Yep. And then remind me, uh, we are getting some, <clears throat> excuse me, we are getting some interns and one of the projects is uh, to do some inventory work for our sidewalks. Um, that's one of the projects Mr. Warner has identified. So you might see them out this summer uh, looking over our sidewalks. Um, any other questions of, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, go on. Public comment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and just to, uh, say what mr warner did uh the list that was turned in on gardena street and uh greenwood ave and, and other places where work is being done that list was turned in to the city engineer three and a half years ago yes okay and that list sat there nothing was done so this 100 200 block issue could have gotten lost somewhere in the uh in the mix but i can guarantee you it was turned in because I walked the two blocks so right in my neighborhood and I recorded the addresses where the streets, where the sidewalks needed to be repaired and turned them in. Where they went to, I don't know. But I do want to thank Mr. Warner for at least coming out and taking a look at it and agreeing with me that he thought the work needed to be done. So I want to thank him for that. And I would encourage the board to go ahead and pay the bill. Because <laughs> the work is already done. The cement's already in the ground. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning uh, to all of you this morning. And also um, to for Council President um, Don Provolinski. I know we have a workshop this Thursday for ARPA money. And I do plan to request an additional uh some additional funding towards sidewalks so oh that's great um i think that um, we've missed a, a couple of cycles it feels like so um it'll be a substantial request um, to help cover it as well that's great mm -hmm. I, I know mr warner's been working on um trying to make connections that haven't been made um or missing sidewalks where we can now connect or connect to a school or a walking path to a school. So he's been very thoughtful about what, where he's doing this. I'll open up, go ahead, more. Yeah. yeah, this is Tommy Colava from 1316 Ohio Street. I complained to Mr. Warner and Mayor Angie about a month ago. There's a chunk of sidewalk missing in front of 1503 Elson Street. Apparently they did some work on their water lateral on the house that's vacant right now. Uh, it was two and a half years ago. Of course, we know the previous administration really was, you know, things are a lot better now. We we can't have any missing chunk pieces of sidewalks in any of our, our neighborhoods. That that needs to get filled in as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Any other comments, oh, Mr. Warren? I'll just add that particular sidewalk that Tommy Clark mentioned is being replaced by the water department. Thank you for staying on that one too. <laughs> Um, any other public comments at this time? Any other board comments? Okay. Um, hearing none on public comments, seeing none online, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Support. I'll call for the vote. Ms. Antisdo? Aye. Ms. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tim Warner. Our next order of business is uh, personnel. Uh, Tatanisha George, uh, Director of Human Resources, is requesting to update the City of Michigan City policy number 303 regarding vacation, Tom. Ms. George, thank you for being here this morning. Good morning, board. Tatanisha George, Human Resources Director, City of Michigan City. Um, I'm requesting and recommending a um, <clears throat> an update to our current vacation policy, policy 303. Um, and what I'm asking is that um, what we found is that employees who um, come in under new administrations um, 
oftentimes they leave positions where they've been for a number of years and they've earned um, several benefits. So when they leave those positions and they come to work under a new administration, they often leave those benefits behind and they come here and they basically have to start from scratch. And, and it, this, what, what this administration has managed to do is to attract some very high quality individuals to serve in these positions and future administrations, if they want to continue this, um, we have to, we need some type of, of something to lure them here. We just can't ask them to start fresh. They've been in their careers for um, decades oftentimes. So what we would like to do is we would like to give them um, vacation time when, when they become newly appointed here, just as a, a way of saying, you know, thank you for your service. Um, they, they leave corporate jobs where the pay is often tr a lot more than what government pay pays. So we want to give them some type of benefit um, when they when they decide to come and work for the city of Michigan City as a way to attract them. Thank you for that synopsis. Um, any public or any board comment on what Ms. George is uh, presenting? Mayor, he can absolutely. Yeah. So um, what has happened? And first of all, we're we're going through a process of making sure we onboard people because several of us didn't know um, much about our benefits. And, you know, we hired an arborist, we hired a city engineer, they left positions where they had four, five, six weeks of vacation. And then we come here and we tell them, you don't have any until next year. It's tough. And, and I think that part of that was part of my issue and not knowing that that was the case um, because when I when I reached out to them they told me what they had and I said no, that's no problem but then you go to the policy and there's no flexibility for an administration to do that um, and I, I believe that that should be a negotiated thing and as we transition into new administrations specifically in the future, they should have the flexibility up to so many weeks that they can ne negotiate. If it's somebody getting out of college, maybe it's only you know a week or two, maybe somebody, but I feel like the, the mayor should have that, re that, that flexibility to make those decisions. But I wanted to make sure that if you pass it, it gives the administration going out the opportunity to put it in the budget for future administrations. So what has happened this year, uh, a lot of money has been spent uh, haphazardly, in, in my opinion, um, because we're paying things from last year into this year, uh, just not understanding. I will find the money to figure it out um, for these individuals, but I do have several individuals and I pulled away from their careers to, to come to the city. And I feel like I should be able to give them a couple of weeks uh, vacation. And like I said, I'll work with the controller's office to figure out how to pay it. But I, I don't want them to be penalized um, for it. Uh, so that's the reason why I'm asking for this, to make sure that I can give them at least two weeks vacation this year um, to utilize. And then we'll work on the budget for next year. I would also add that in other cities I've worked in, this is a way to stay competitive and that you get good quality employees for the positions that you're looking to fill. Um, it's just it's just a way to make sure that you're getting, like I said, getting good employees to especially city engineers, things that are very technical and specialized that you're looking to fill those positions. Ms. George, would you please read the language so that we can enter it into um, to our, record. yeah, and to record and just to be clear with what we're changing and what we're voting on? Of course, Mr. Yorker. Employees, the, la the, the additional language reads, employees who are appointed by the mayor, i.e. department heads and staff in the mayor's office holding appointed positions are eligible for vacation immediately upon hire beginning with 10 days. 
The following vacation schedule applies to employees appointed by the mayor on or after January 1st, 2024. Beginning of service, 10 days. Second calendar year of continuous service, 10 days. Fourth calendar year of continuous service, 15 days. 10th calendar year of continuous service, 20 days. And that mirrors what the what um, is also in the policy regarding um, city um, city regular city employees. Any questions of the language? So, to be clear, it's it's really just get guaranteeing a, a ten days of vacation in the first two years of, of employment. Yes for the appointed officials that are coming in. Yeah. And then the fourth calendar year, that's that's the same as what all city employees get is 15 days. Correct. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Any other questions of Ms. George and the language now that we have it in record? Any public comments on this? Okay, well, any online? Uh, hearing none, I'll close the public comment session. I will entertain a motion from the board. Motion to approve. Support. I'll call for the vote. Ms. Santisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for doing that. Thank you, board. Our next order of business is an application for additional employees. Uh, Ron Landrup, owner and operator of A Slice of Heaven, is requesting to have additional employees at his mobile food business, license number 25016. I do believe Mr. Landrup is here today. Give us your name and address for the record. Ron Landrup, 425 Ogden Ave, Michigan City. Thank you. Tell us, just tell us what you're doing. And bring in a couple extra people to help through the uh, busy summer months. Okay. And do you just need two? I think so. Okay. I, th I think sh that probably should do it. Uh, any questions of Mr. Landry from the Mr. Landry from the board? Okay. Any public comments on this? Anything online? I don't see anyone with a hand up online. Um, I'll close public comment section. Any, uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve. Second. Your motion is second. I'll call for the vote. Ms. Santisto? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Uh, Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you, Mr. Landrup. Thank you. Um, our next order of business is a payroll docket. Uh, this is the city payroll for April 19th, 2024. May th city payroll for May 3rd, 2024. And fire and police payroll for May 1st, 2024. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Support. Call for the vote. Ms. Antisdo? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. The chair votes aye as well. Uh, our next order of business is the claims docket for May 6th, 2024. Do I hear uh, a motion? Motion to approve. Order second. Please support. Motion second. Uh, I'll call for the vote. Ms. Santisdo? Aye. Ms. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Uh, Mr. Simmons? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Um, our next order is, our next moving on, we have some unfinished business uh, for pending items. Uh, we have a request for special event and road closure. This is for Zorn uh, Brew Works. Zorn Brew Works is requesting the following, and this was tabled on March 18th, 2024. One, to host the Mac and Cheese Festival on September 29th, 2024, and two, road closure for the festival on 9th Street between Michigan Boulevard and York Street on York Street between 8th and 10th Street. Um, 
Do we have, I think we we're waiting on a COI from them. I think that was the issue. Do we have that finally? Yes, we did receive it. Um, I did talk to um, attorney Amber LePage and she did approve it as well as general insurance. Um, so it is good to go and it should be in your packets, the uh, final approved COI. Okay. So maybe we can move this off of our pending items today. Well, I'm hearing that. I uh, do. I'll open it up for public comment. Yeah, Tommy Klovic, thirteen sixteen Ohio Street. You know, back in I think it was two thousand and seventeen, when the Roger Brooks International, who was a man who evaluated our branding study, one of his biggest criticisms: we don't monetize enough. I think for some of these road closures, we have to stop, start setting a fee structure for all these road closures. Especially if it's not for a nonprofit, it's like for a business having a, a open house, a sidewalk sale, or a, something like this. Uh, we need to start start charging them for it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, any other public comment? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to close public comment. I'll entertain a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on. Come on up. Yes, absolutely. Move it off the table, consider it, and then motion. City Councilman Don Prozbolinski, just a few items that I'd like to bring to the board's attention, and I believe this falls under board's uh, uh, jurisdiction. Uh, number one, in, in the downtown area, in the arts district, okay, are we, am I ahead of my, am I ahead of myself here? Okay. I heard public comment. I thought you were talking. Oh, oh yeah, no, the, uh, uh, public comment. This is public comment just on this, this item. Okay. Uh, 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 mac and cheese. Fest. Have been no, no, the, uh, you're fine. Email, uh, mac and cheese fest. <laughs> Comments on mac and cheese fest. <laughs> you're okay. You're okay. Jumped ahead on us. Um, absolutely, Ms. Moore. Um, I had raised the question, and I think it's been addressed, although it still kind of states the way they, they've, and I know to Nisha um, brought it up at one meeting, is that they're not closing the whole road between 8th and 10th Street. There is a section of diagram that just closes right around the building, and the so the homes are not closed off from access, which when we first read it and it was brought up, it seemed like they were, but they're not. There is a zone that is identified. That's those are great. That's a great comment. Thank you for clarifying that because I remember that was a was brought up. Thank you, Miss Moore. Um okay, so do I hear a motion to we need two motions, one to take it off the table. And then two to um, if we want to uh, give it the approval. Okay, motion to table up, take that off the table. Do a second. We'll support. Uh, call for the vote, Miss Antisdo. Aye. Miss Smith. Aye. Miss Moore. Aye. Uh, Mr. Simmons. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Um, okay, so we're off the table. Do I hear? Do I hear a motion to approve um, based upon the new um, submission of the completed COI? Motion to approve based it on based on a new CY. Support. Call for the vote, Miss Antisdo. Aye. Miss Smith. Aye. Mr. Miss, I'm sorry, Miss Moore. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Uh, and chair votes aye as well. Okay, our next uh, uh, order of business is um, from an unfinished item as well. This was tabled April seventeenth, twenty twenty three. A uh, request to submit work request. Councilman Don Presbolinski is requesting to submit a work request to CSX, I'm sorry, CSX Railroads Crossing for repairs at Woodland, Rusky, Carroll, and Greenwood Ave. And I do believe this, the city engineer is here, and I think he may have some new, some information for us regarding this. Tim Warner, city engineer. Um, 
I spoke with CSX Railroad a couple of weeks ago. They are improving all of the railroad crossings from St. Joe, Michigan through Northwest Indiana. Um, they think all the work, they're in New Buffalo this week now, I believe. I haven't talked to them yet today, but they should be doing the crossings in New Buffalo and then they'll be moving down our way. So they have all these on their list to, to fix and they hope they'll have everything done by the 4th of July. I will talk to them again and see what their schedule is, if there's any update to that, but that's what they've indicated so far. Would you like for us to leave this on the about uh, ending to the next? Yeah, right. well, give it um, maybe second meeting of next month. Come back. That's a lot. Of... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Um, any questions of Mister Miss Mister Warner from the board? I'll open up for public comment. Any public comments, Don? Okay. It's moving along. It sounds like that's good news. Um. Okay, I'll close public comments and we'll move on to, we'll, we'll, we'll table this to our second uh, meeting of June. Right, they've, uh, they've laid out the ties along the railroad, so it's encouraging, but yeah. we want a timeline. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, our next uh, order of unfinished business is uh, street Enhancement, Paul A. perez at 1716 Washington Street is requesting to have the road fixed at Washington Street and 11th from the double track heading north. Um, this was tabled on November 6, 2023. Any news on that? Uh, Brad, I see you out there. Any news on that? I know that was probably a punch list item, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Good morning, board. Brad Minnick, Haas and Associates. I I don't know if uh, you guys received the punch list packet update I sent out. Um, I have copies here. Yeah, we got. You got it. No, I don't think. It... Sorry, I don't think I had received this. So. Okay. I had, I had sent it out um, last week, and I'll just give you an update. So if you recall, uh, the board members that were present for the last meeting in January, there were approximately 180 items on the punch list uh, for the double track project related to the Michigan City portion of the work. And um, I've been in contact with the construction inspection firm that's inspecting the work that's being done on the project um, to work through some of those items. And I received notice from the consultant uh, performing inspection last week that the punch list was complete. Um, so, I took the liberty of putting together a photo summary of some of the items, particularly the 11th Street corridor, the ADA ramps, and some of the sidewalk work. Um, and that's what you have in front of you. Uh, I also shared it with Tim Werner uh, on Friday. So as you look through the punch list items, the concrete's a little bit difficult to see in the first couple pages, um, but the second page, uh, for example, the picture on the left is um, the downtown station block area at Franklin and 11th, <coughs> excuse me, and the consultant taking the pictures stood a ways back, right? So it looks, better from afar um, but I I took a close-up picture of the um, in this case the second picture from left graffiti on the sidewalk panel that was not repaired and then again on the second page the farthest picture to the right there's footprints in front of in the concrete in front of what used to be the rodeo bar um, at that 
south west corner of Franklin and 11th and I guess also of note as you work through the packet um, towards the middle there it's it's actually the sixth page um, you can see standing water at 11th and Tennessee Street and then also the very next page with the blue house which is a little more uh, readily discernible in your packet is the corner of 11th Street and Ohio Street uh, again standing water for traffic that's headed eastbound on 11th Street so my concern for the city is um, as this is turned over it can be a long-term maintenance issue um, and again these are just the highlights of the of the road project and I know the city's made substantial commitment to the project over the last several years um, so I don't I don't want uh, marginal workmanship to become a burden to the city uh, going forward so my recommendation is to table this until the next meeting in May, May 20th, and that, that would offer me an opportunity to meet with Tim Werner and formulate a plan to um, effectively push back on the contractor and, and raise the bar to something acceptable for the city. Uh, I, it's important to me that the city gets their money's worth is a major participant in the project and uh that's that's my update um and i feel it feel any questions any questions of uh mr minnick oh man it's, it is important to get the water off that if it's just standing there it's going to ruin that that asphalt quicker and cost us be costly in the long term so i agree with you um any any board comments any public comments on this item hearing hearing none i'll close the public comment section um would we entertain a motion to uh, keep this on the pending list until the how, how long do you recommend uh may 20th the second meeting in may second meeting is that long enough yes please uh, okay uh, and do i hear a motion to that effect Motion to keep this on the pending list until May the 22nd, 20. 20th, 20th. Uh, giving uh, city engineer enough time to get with uh, South Shore to address the standing water along the, the way. Very second. Support. Call for the vote, Ms. Antisdale. Aye. Ms. Smith. Aye. Ms. Moore. Aye. Mr. Simmons. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you, Mr. Menick. Thank you. Um, before we move on to public comment, um, I would like to um, ask this it wasn't on the agenda, but I would like to ask that uh, our parks department and or i'm sorry our uh, uh special events uh get a chance to give us an update if you'd like to if not you don't have to but i thought i would offer it if you needed to anything you need okay um and then i know i'm going to hand it off to next on the agenda will be our flaherty and collins for an update because we do have some things happening in this month mr albert thank you for being here this morning Morning board, David Albers, project manager for Flaherty and Collins. Um, yeah, as you can see, as you drive past the site, we're making great progress. Um, foundations will be complete with the garage project this week. And um, precast is already starting to arrive at our staging lot, which is the old St. Anthony Hospital. Um, and they will start erecting uh, the day after Memorial Day. So May 28th is when precast will start. Um, that is when those pieces will start getting shuttled from the Franciscan lot coming north on Wabash 
turning east on 10th Street and coming right into the, the site. So um, I know that residents, the, the city had plans to um, issue the no parking along Wabash and 10th. And so that should probably start that a week from today. Um, if you need to give them two weeks notice, I would assume. Brad, are you taking notes on this? All right. Brad is our MOT. Um, uh, he's going to help us with the notifications. And then Corporal Wright, you're here today. I know that you were very involved in when we were deciding this route, if you will, and the mo the, the operation of how we're going to do this. So be prepared, I would say. Okay, excellent. And we'll we'll probably get together um very soon on and make sure we get everything and then i had intended on sending my uh some code the code enforcers out to you know deliver hand deliver notifications to say hey this is what's happening as well we'll put that together as well yeah that sounds good yeah the um the trucking company will utilize uh escort service because they'll have to basically close uh wabash between 10th and 11th, as the trucks will have to go into that southbound lane in order to make the turn on the 10th street. So that's all according to what was the original plan that was approved. And um, Corporal Wright has my cell phone number for complaints and issues. Sure. Um, any, any questions of the board? I know this is a big project and a lot of anticipation has been happening around it, but any, any questions of Mr. Albers? at all just to confirm your is is that what the police escort no it's not a police escort it'll be a private um escort service mm. and, and flaggers mm. yes it's this is going to be going over the course of about three three months um with mm. pieces coming in every day so that would be a lot to ask mm. of, the, of the police department any other comments, Mr. Albers? Um, I'll open it up for any public comments, any questions, things of that nature. Um, Tim, did you have any? You have anything with this one? You good? Okay. Um, any comments from the public? I can plan to come back at the on the twentieth next meeting. That, that would be very helpful. I think just to. Uh, there's going to be a lot of for three months. It's going to be quite a bit. So let's just make sure we're staying on this and making sure we're addressing any issues. Yeah, I'll open up for public. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Scott Melanchier in Kenwood Place. Uh, hearing that this is going to go th for three months, I'm just curious about details of the garage. I mean, how many stories tall is it? How many? How many load? Six. Six now, how many loads of these? How many loads of several? Yeah, uh, it's three months worth, yeah. apparently. Right. Okay, so it's a six-story garage yeah. of the precast. These are, you know, those double T's and all that kind of thing. Okay. No, just curious about kind of how big it was since it's going to go on so long. And it's great that it's happening. Really happy we're moving forward. I think there's 690 pieces of concrete, something somewhere around that, give or take a few. <laughs> Tom, you call out with 1316 Ohio Street. I just want to wish them a successful project. Everybody be safe. Nobody get hurt. Everybody go home to your families nice and uh, nice and healthy. Uh, you know, I think this is the same uh, process they used to build the original blue chip casino boat. So this really isn't nothing new to Michigan City. So I, I think it's going to go pretty smooth. And as far as Franciscan and the reason it's construction, I guess that'd be okay. I heard Dean Mazzoni mention he's been negotiating with Mayor Angie on their site plan for that for their green space. So Absolutely. I think everything's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, Mr. Owens? Yeah, I'll also bring up that we, we're going to be working with the water department because as far as the, the, the sister site, so the Franklin, the actual apartment tower, um, we are looking to start doing some utility work on that um, along the west side of our site along Franklin Street. Um, the water department is going to want to, they told us they, they want to extend the water main from Penn yeah. and Franklin southwards. Um, so we will work with them. Um, hopefully I have a plan in place and I can bring that in front of you guys uh, for any kind of approvals that are needed on the 20th. Yeah, I think it's going to go in Franklin. We're going to have to close down maybe a lane if yeah. not 
most likely yeah. we'll have to shut down a the northbound lane of Franklin Street yeah. or we'll try to make it as short of a duration as possible, but that's what we're trying to okay. finalize. And then we'll Tim's here. I see Mr. Warner taking notes, so we'll we'll make sure we coordinate. Yeah. And then the um right around the time that we start precast, we're also going to start uh the, the foundation work. So we will have a tower crane that are that's being used. That I think as far as I know, it's the first time Michigan City has had a tower crane. Um, so it's uh, it's going to be an exciting <laughs> uh, prospect for people, uh, but that'll start getting built um, in the probably the first end of May, first parts of June, um, and we're coordinating with the inspection department on all that with uh, Ms. Downs. Yes, she's been keeping me informed. Thank you so much, and I know Mr. Warner's been involved with that as well. So thank you very much. Any other any um, before he leaves, any questions from the board? Okay, just want to make sure everyone gets their comments heard. Thank you, Mr. Albers, for being here today. We'll see you again next next month. Or uh, I'm sorry, at the end of the month, two weeks. Um, okay, our next order of business. I'll open up for public comment. Uh, Mr. Prezrelinski. <laughs> Okay, I'm on the right spot of the agenda now, so I'm okay. Uh, Councilman Don Prisbolinski, 215 Gardena. Just a couple items, and I think this falls under the jurisdiction of the uh, Board of Works. Uh, in the downtown area, the flags that we have or banners that we have up on the uh, light poles, I've noticed many of them are, not many, but there's a number that are tattered, ripped, uh, just on the north side here around the corner, coming into City Hall, there's one out there that's basically ripped in half. So if we could get those cleaned up, I think that would make a nice touch to the downtown area. Uh, the second thing, and this here is a, to me, a safety issue, a vehicular safety issue from 11th Street going south to Cool Spring Ave in many of the uh, driveways leading on to Franklin Street, you know, from the gas stations, the convenience stores that have you, is uh, there's these large rose bushes that were planted along Franklin Street. And some of these rose bushes are like five feet high. So when you're sitting in your car, you cannot see traffic coming down Franklin Street in the Frank in the traffic coming down Franklin Street cannot see the car sitting on this side of the rose bush trying to pull out onto Franklin Street and I believe the height the height of any vegetation uh, along a and that's a highway there that's not even a residential street should only be like three feet tall so these bushes or vegetation along that whole corridor area should be looked at and trimmed back or replaced with other vegetation that won't get that large. And the uh, third item is on the corner of, I believe it's Avalon Court and Franklin Street, just one block up from Cold Spring. I think that's Avalon Court. Anyway, the city put that wayfinding sign there that's that large sign there Skyler the uh, the wayfinding sign you know go to the beach and all that yeah but right and that sign is probably 10 feet high but right in front of that sign there's a tree and you can't even see that sign with that tree being there or the sign being right next to the tree. So whatever the city would do, decide to do with it, but right now that wayfinding sign doesn't serve any purpose to anybody. Okay, so to me, it just doesn't make sense to be in the spot it's in, or the tree's not in the spot that it is. So I just wanted to bring that up to see if we could get that corrected and or investigated to see what the city wants to do with that. Because if you're going to have a wayfinding sign, 
you should have it there for the purpose it's intended to, yeah. to send people in the right direction. So, so we'll send these items. I think. Thank you. I think, well, other than one of them is probably Mr. Wolf for have to go out and assess our city forester. Um, two of them we could probably send to Shang and uh, see if he can uh, get those added. One of them probably should, could be added to our um, landscaping maintenance contract. And, and I, I think I would agree there are some pretty tall rose bushes out there right now. The, I can think of one at Rio's right now that's very hard to see over. Um, Mr. Klovic. Yeah, this is Tommy Klovic, 1316 Ohio Street. I got something else to complain about. Uh, I, think, I believe it's 2503 uh, Ohio Street. Uh, the, the contractor came, put a new roof on the house. He took all the shingles and he just dumped them right on the curb, right into the on-street parking area in front of the house. This pile of shingles have been laying there for, for two weeks. I said, my, my niece lives right behind there, 2520 uh, Elston Street. I just went motor lawn. Those shingles need to be picked up, and that contractor needs to be fined because, you know, the city don't do special pickups. They, they should have called Huntsville off and got a dumpster for their shingles. They got, I think they got shingles all out in the alley behind my niece's house. So, Mr. Colby, can you thank give you. the address of that one more time? I believe it's 2503 Ohio Street. You can just a big pile of shingles right on the curb and the... You know, we got the little base for our on-street parking. Uh, that that that's a big no-no. They need a big, 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 big hefty fine for that. On that, I just thank you and keep up the good work. Thank you all. Any other public comments? No. Nope. Hi, Scott Mel. Good morning, Scott Mel. Here at Kenwood Place. Um, I'd like to bring your attention to. Um, I think it's Thomas Hunter Drive, the road that goes in front of Meyer. I'm, I know we've recently acquired that, or at least a portion of it. I know ownership gets confusing. It does do we own it in front of Meyer? Do we own the whole strip? Majority um, of it. Yeah, we're working through that. So, I, and I know we're all excited about punching it through to the Walmart uh, driveway, but it since it was paved, it hasn't been striped. There is there's no striping there of of any type, especially at the end, especially the north end where it intersects with Meyer Drive. There's no stop line. There's no left turn line. I'm sure you're probably aware of it, but. We care a lot about our, our roads and people following the rules. It would be really helpful if we could strike that even while we're waiting to do more work there. Thank you. Any other public comments? Anything online, Drew? Any hands, no hands? Okay, um, I'll, I'll, open, I'll close public comments. I'll open up for board comments. Any board comments today? Miss Moore. I have a question. Regarding the vegetation height, um, what is the different regulations for along? So, so what we have at each intersection, you have a view shed triangle, and typically you go 25 feet back and 25 feet up, or 15 feet up. It just depends on if it's an alley or 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 a street, and we don't allow anything inside that view shed to be more than three feet tall, typically. Or we, if it's a tree, we would like it to be trimmed to be able to see underneath it. So we raise up the trees and we raise down the vegetation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, I believe I explained that pretty good. Mr. Werner, did I hit it? Okay. <laughs> um, that's typically it. And typically you go back about 25 feet or 15 feet, depending upon what type of intersection it is. Okay. And then one more thing, um, I this is just a side comment from the last record, but the Restore Works that's doing that renovation on the building on Franklin Street, the old, they're doing a great job. That's amazing looking, you know, it's coming along and it looks like they're doing a great job. I don't know about the engineering or anything like that, but it looks really good. It looks I, really uh, nice. It's, it's definitely an improvement over the, the pink uh, pa uh, paint that was there. <laughs> Mr. Stanford, thank you for working with them on that. I know you're really instrumental in getting that done. So I really appreciate you getting that going. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Support. All right. And with that, we'll, we'll adjourn the board. I really appreciate it. Thank you.